Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths where one of my holes is seemingly drifting ever so slowly into the one next to it and hopefully that's not going to cause serious CPU lag. But anyway, so um, I'm not sure if this video is really a tutorial or a guide or anything like that, which is why I'm classifying this as a fun video because it's uh, something I dreamed up uh, the other day. And it's hull testing, basically. I have made at least four armor tutorials at the time of this recording, and who knows, by the time you're watching this, maybe I will have made more if you're watching this years in the future. In which case, hello from the past. I hope your time is going better than ours. But in any case, um, so I've made three hulls, because I was bored of just making turrets and just uh, testing them as my default from the depths meditation state. So as I said, to myself, borderwise, practice making hulls. You keep banging on about armor and how to do it, so now put your money where your mouth is, make some armored hulls, just to see which ones work best. So these are three kind of experimental ones, um, and uh, they've made in kind of from right to left is the order I made them, and the first one is a wacky one. So uh, this hull, if I do this, uh, you will see that it is basically Oh dear, did I... Do? Oh dear, I didn't actually finish this one. Oh well, looks like you're uh, out of luck there, Pally. Anyway, so uh, this is, as you've probably already noticed, is three meters of uh, armor, uh, most of it. Wow, I really did not finish this. Wow, no wonder... Spoiler alert, no wonder this doesn't work so well. So, the idea of this is that this is alloy and heavy armor. And that's it. So, I kind of wanted to test this, uh, just to see kind of how, well, how bad it is, because um, I believe it is reasonably common uh, knowledge in the From the Depths, um, uh, in the From the Depths community, in particular the segment of it uh, that is interested in armor mechanics, uh, that alloy and heavy armor are one of those things where you have to use them in very specific ways in order to get uh, your... Uh, the most bang for your buck. In this case, um, uh, just spamming alloy is not a good idea. Spamming heavy armor isn't a good idea. Um, well, for one thing, if you rely too much on alloy to make yourself float, uh, once it gets blown off, you sink. So that's a problem. And the problem with heavy armor is that it's really heavy. So this thing is got a lot of heavy armor in it. Like, an alloy is the most buoyant block in the game, but this thing still requires a lot of engine power and a lot of uh, propellers in order to um, in order to stay afloat, so to speak. So you'll see down in the bottom right, just let me move my microphone so I can see it, um, that it is burning through materials really quickly while not doing anything. And that's necessary for it to stay uh, afloat. So that is a hull number one, the heavy armor alloy. Um, I don't know, so we're all going to be testing this against the same thing, which is the Thresher Shark, because that's a hilarious thing to test against. Uh, this fella is uh, quite different. This is reinforced wood and stone, and very, very thick. So this has five meters of armor at the minimum. A similar design, like um, it does save on block space down here, uh, just by having an air gap down here, a kind of wet space and mostly stone and the AI compartment and um, uh, the fuel engines are also they're wrapped in stone rather than anything else because I wanted uh, consistency what is in here oh there's the AI oh yeah it doesn't actually need anything because there's need anything else because it has no detection it has no weapon so one two three four five air gap kind of yep no air gap uh, with slopes in there for absolutely no reason one two three four five and you can tell Okay, I wasn't completely lazy. This is a mixture of vertical and horizontal beams. Um, technically, according to people who know these things, vertical is still slightly better than any other configuration. But in practice, the difference seems to be pretty small. So just so long as they're big 4 meter beams, you should be okay. And this one just has... Well, this is the cheapest one of these by far. So this fella is 460,000 materials. This one is 140,000 materials. And... This one over here is 460,000 materials again, roughly. And uh, so moving on to this guy, this guy's a little bit interesting. You'll notice um, 
Uh, this guy is long and skinny, which is a bad design uh, for armored craft because you want them chonky. Yes, I know, this is my standard canoe shape. And um, I fully admit it's got its drawbacks. And uh, this one is a little more stubby. This one is very wide. That's uh, what you notice with these things. Also, lots of slopes. And the reason that um, as we go on, see, it's the same with over here with the stone thing, is that the reason I do this is because the effective armor thickness... Um, uh, is higher uh, when you start armoring the deck. So uh, these all have consistent um, armor ratio. So this thing has three meters of deck armor and uh, three meters of armor down below, except in this case, it's uh, got an air gap instead of another layer of heavy armor because that three of the meters is really excessive. And here, one, two, three, and then air gap, one, two, three. So, so basically the ratio is three, three, six. And um, if you want to know more about that particular ratio, it's not a hard and fast rule. Uh, look up my video on building craft in three sizes, because that's where I came up with the idea and first showcase it. So this thing is similar. One, two, three, four, five. And same down here. Go over here. It's one, two, uh, water gap, wet space, two, five. There we go. And side armor here. One, two, three, four, five. Air gap, one, two, three, four, five, and in the outside world. Uh, this fella, I forget how thick this is, it's kind of ridiculous. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we have the air gap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, air gap. Big air gap, by the way. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, basically, this guy has three, um, has, armors in, has armor in layers of three, and alloy and heavy armor. This guy has armor in layers of five, being stone or reinforced wood. And this fella has armor in layers of seven, being alloy or metal. And I think this one, well, just because it's the biggest one, so 25,000 blocks, 15,000 blocks, 8,000 blocks. So, I don't know, just um, Probably not a hugely fair comparison, like uh, honestly if I really wanted this to be fair I'd make all of these things the same size, but oh well, this is not a tutorial after all, this is a fun video where we are going to watch these things get blown up. So without further ado, let us blow them up. So I'm picking the Thresher Shark for this simply because the Thresher Shark does a huge amount of damage uh, quite quickly, uh, especially those railgun hollow points it fires are super scary and um... Uh, flawed armor designs tend to get shredded like really quickly by it. So let's go over here, go over here. Thresher shot goes there. Wait, no. Wait, no. Let's try that again and set this to 1,500 meters. And thresher shot, thresher shot. And we're going to spawn in the first one, which is the smallest one. Uh, that is an advantage of using heavy armor, is that um, if you want to make things really small and compact, like tanks for instance, um, that is really good because um, it's got a lot of armor and HP in a smaller space. That's one of its advantages. Making a big thing out of heavy armor is kind of not doing that though, so we're gonna spawn this guy in with yeah, the deep water guard. Should have painted these in fleet colors, that would have been hilarious. So now we are going to time, and I'm actually gonna get the stopwatch. Um, uh, out on my phone here, just so I know for sure and can say it out loud, um, how long this takes to uh, get destroyed. Uh, yay. So now we're locked on, and go! So let's see here. See, already the Thresher Shark is making a real mess of things. The alloy is being peeled off pretty effortlessly. Let's see here. Already lost 2% health. And... Yeah, just, um... Armor stacking is not as good as it used to be, so that alloy is getting ripped off fairly easily. I think we are still doing reasonably well with buoyancy. Ah, those super cavitation hollow points. Uh, let's see here, what is happening? That layer is stopping it though, that air gap um, is proving uh, quite useful against these hollow points. Um, and wherever it doesn't have an air gap, you can see it's already uh, wrecking the cavity. 
so to speak. But um, yeah, it's been just a few seconds and just um, considering how much AP those holopo- I should not have paused. Why did I do that? Oh no. The stopwatch is useless. Screw it. No more stopwatch. We can't analyze and time this at the same time. <sighs> I did that before, actually. I was timing this against, uh, what's it, what was it? The tier? And I paused just reflexively to see what was happening. And then I was like, wait, no, that's going to mess with the time. We can figure it out. We can figure it out. Um, shouldn't be too hard to figure out. You just got to track how long I paused. And that's why YouTube has a timer on the bottom. Aren't you happy about that? I'm certainly happy about that. So, what's happening? The split second this thing loses engine power, it is going to sink. Yeah, it gets explosions. This uh, armor scheme works really well. It does basically nothing, unless they're huge. This thing is hang holding out uh, a bit longer than I thought it would, actually. I thought it would be gone by now. Wait. Oh, no. There's, there's engines. There's delicious engines. What's happening here? Did it uh, destroy the propellers yet? It's destroyed some of them. Yeah, this is, um, this is, if nothing else, is a really good reason why to use them. Oh, there we go. She's sinking. She is going to sink. Split second, she's below 80% health. That's it. That'll be goodbye, all she wrote. Do you like the Azabods on here? You know, it's kind of remarkable I've managed to make this particular kind of hull shape work at all, um, considering the many drawbacks of it. This could, might actually be decent a uh, decent submarine hull, actually, simply because, well, I mean, look at it. It's being perfectly stable underwater. Like, yeah, maybe this would make a good submarine hull. Like, you know... It's, it does seem weird to use alloy. Um, yeah, it's just it's staying exactly at um, at this height. So, yeah, maybe submarine is the way to go for this. And this is why you gotta test uh, your stuff. Because now, now it's holding out really well. Actually, that's a brilliant idea. And now, jeez, the um, what do we call it? The thrusher is having a bit of a bit of trouble hitting it, even though it has super cavitation rounds. Also, we're now apparently out of reach of its torpedoes, which is, uh, kind of hilarious. Oh, dear. How long has it been going? I have not been keeping track. I should have, you know what I should have looked at? I should have looked at the timer, uh, on OBS, which is open on my other monitor here. I did not do that. I am a silly goose. Yeah, those explosive torpedoes are gonna uh, tear uh, the alloy off, but basically nothing else. Actually, does the Thresher have super cavitation rounds? The fact that this thing has basically no wireless signals, and um, I believe alloy has quite a low sonar signature, also is kind of meaning that uh, she's having a bit of trouble hitting it. Wait, is that why the black current is covered in alloy? I literally just realized that. Is that why it is? I was wondering about that for the longest time. Ooh, boy. Just one more HP to go. The the metal thing is going to take a long time to destroy. Yeah, she's sinking. She's sinking. I think this will do it. Yep, there she goes. Health below 80% and sinking, and it looks like... Oh, she's still got engine power. Jeez. So, yeah, this particular kind of hull... Yeah, it would make a decent submarine. Uh, definitely not a decent ship, though, because, you know, in order for ships to be ships, they need to float. And this thing does not float very well. There's too much heavy armor. Uh, the alloy does not is not enough to compensate for it at all. So, yeah. But, yeah, it's like submarine. Why not? It was hanging around below the surface of the ocean quite well. So now we've tested that one. We can now test... Why is Caps Lock on? That's weird. That's weird. Stop it. Stop it, Caps Lock. So, a Thresher Shark again, and now we're gonna spawn in the big stone thing, and this is gonna take a long time, because there's a lot of blocks to chew through. 
It is amazingly cheap though, considering how big it is. Like 15,000 blocks, 140,000 materials, admittedly with no weapons, and especially uh, no missiles. But the fact that this thing can float absolutely fine uh, without engine power, it probably means it's not going to get a uh, sinking beast board. Although, uh, hollow points do chew through stone like no one's business. Look at those chunks. Oh man. Oh, this is like a hungry man eating mashed potato really quickly. Oof. Yeah, 5%. Ooh, maybe not. See, this kind of whole uh, scheme, I believe, is better against kinetic penetrators than it is against uh, hollow point, because hollow point just wrecks this. I mean, look at that block confetti. If you ever want to make a scary-ass railgun, just uh, reverse engineer the Thresher Shark. Look at this thing. Oh yeah, for those of you who don't know what the Thresher Shark is, um, uh, this is the Thresher Shark. It's just, it is basically a railgun, one huge railgun, uh, with a boat built around it. Because this thing is... Uh, the main draw of the show. And the, or pretty much everything else on here is to support that railgun. And yes, it definitely will get a most wanted at some point. Because it totally deserves it. Short answer is nuke it. Like, just chuck suicide craft at it. I think this guy is going to get AI deaded, actually. This is quite therapeutic, actually. Just to watch this thing get disintegrated. Disintegrated. And of course, all it would take really to um, make this a much more even fight is, well, just stick some huge missiles on this guy. And then away you go, you've got an effective craft. Because yes, uh, the Thresher Shark uh, can be taken down. I mean, that's what huge missiles are for. They're designed to... Uh, oh, They're designed to flatten big scary things. And uh, yeah, so the AI compartment is here and all right there this all used to be hull over here so uh yeah that's a bit of an issue it's holding up reasonably well though if like um if there was like yeah like down the if you go down the middle of this thing the armor is doing its job so there's okay he over here is like being chewed away but um Along most of this thing's length, uh, considering that this thing is made of stone, um, yeah, it's like uh, if there were weapon, if there were weapons on this, particularly if they were on the other side of the craft, uh, they'd still be firing uh, by this point. That's after losing like a lot of health. I mean, if you put uh, shields on this thing, like either kind of shield, it would hold out a little bit longer. Yes, like, um, the torpedoes are going to make a bit more of a mess of this. Um, simply because, um, stone isn't as good against high explosive as alloy or heavy armor is. Might be saying that the Thresher Shark is not a good test for this. I say nay. I say, um, I say the Thresher Shark is a great test for this. Simply because it does so much damage so quickly, you're not wasting time, uh, just around waiting for damage to happen. Wow, this, it is hitting everywhere. Wow. The fact that this thing is still floating, though, that um, with basically almost one entire side of it peeled off, and then a, few, a little bit more on the other side, this, uh, and it's still floating, and it doesn't need propellers to float. Uh, these are engine exhausts. They're not props. Um, yeah, that goes to show you just... Um, just how effective it is, at least for ships, to have uh, buoyant materials and uh, uh, things with neutral buoyancy, like stone or metal. So, yeah, that's an important thing to consider with ships, it's just, um, yeah, there we go, it's too damaged. I have no idea how long that lasted in relation to the first thing. I think, um, I think the first hull um, lasted a long time simply because it sank so early, which... Like, is a major point against it, let's be honest. Uh, but this thing, it lasted right... It was still moving, it was still floating, uh, right up to the point where it got too damaged and now it's just spawning. 
So yeah, it's like, um, and the fact that this thing is a lot cheaper than the other one too. So like stone is pretty good. Stone is amazing. It's just when in doubt, you can use stone because it doesn't actually cost that much and it's really effective. Okay, so now the last one. Let's see how let's see how long this guy lasts. And uh, remember, I'm not timing because apparently I just sabotage myself when I try and time things. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go down here just a little bit. So a huge metal hull. Uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, this is a big boy. I think this one's gonna last the longest because it's biggest. I actually had no idea how much bigger this thing was. Although it's still... Whoa! Freaking hollow point, man. Yeah, it's already down 1% health. Oh yeah, I should also mention, um, you might notice there's no external propulsion on this thing. I have taken full advantage of the... Uh, the, what you call it of the uh, the wet space in here and this is where I'm hiding uh, all the propulsion and there's a double there's basically all the uh, internal propellers and this is not spin block second by the way there is enough clearance for these things uh, to work and um, yeah this thing moves quite fast and quite it's very maneuverable for its size simply because well it's got all those rudders and those props just hidden inside it Although, did it just lose engine power? Well, no. No, what happened? Are you moving? Hard to tell. Oh wow, it's not moving, what happened? No way, did it already take out the engines? Nope. What's happening in there? This thing is actually steam powered, by the way. I was experimenting a little bit. Let's find those props. Eh. Yeah. Yep. They are, uh... What is happening? I swear I didn't do this before. What is happening now? Whoa! I'm glad I'm recording this. This is a surprise. Oh, wait! Did its buoyancy get messed with? What? Say what? That's weird. Wow, this is a... Uh, kind of literally a colossal failure. I was not expecting it to do this badly, because it's not even moving correctly. Oh yeah, it's got rudder stabilizers. Maybe these things cocked up and they didn't work. Interesting. I'm gonna have to take a look at this because it's definitely not supposed to just stay still. Maybe reverse was activated. Hmm. That being said, it is only it is a loss twenty for like fourteen percent health, and the way it's turning, it keeps showing its uh, less armored parts. Wow, that deck is actually holding up pretty well. Um, to that. I guess that's one thing to keep in mind uh, if you're... Well, it's just like fighting in real life. Keep moving. And if you have your big armored thing just constantly... Wow. I should not have relied on rudders so much for this. Anyway, if you're constantly moving around, um, basically you're spreading the damage out over more unarmored uh, sections of hull. And that's really useful, especially against something like the Thresher, which just... Um, well, it can rip chunks out of you like this. This is when, uh, this is from, like, immediately in the fight when this hull wasn't moving around enough. So yeah, this is still fascinating. Like, I would stroke my goatee if I had one, but I do not. So, uh, we're not, we're not, we can't stroke it. Can't stroke the thing you don't have. That's what she said. No, 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 that's not funny. That's not funny. Stop it. I'm sorry. I was saying stop it to me. If all of you were about to complain about at me about that joke, no, you go ahead. I deserve it. Hurt me! Please don't hurt me. Please be nice. But anyway, um, yeah, this hull is uh, definitely hurting. Jeez. I wonder if this should be the thumbnail. Wow. You have seen better days. But oh, wait, now you're moving. 
Actually, that's one of the things I liked about this hull, you know, before it started, you know, messing up. Is that this thing basically, this thing essentially moves sideways thanks to all the rudders in this. Rudders are really broken. You can get them to do amazing things. Yep, and there's the steam engines. We're losing steam. Losing steam. Oh, hello. Are you? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. It was like it. Wow, this thing moves so erratically. That's what I get for using so many rudders. Oh, no. Oh, no. And now, now she's not sinking. Wow, this thing messes with physics. What madness have I created? What madness is this? Now it's all sort of trying to be a submarine. And nope, man, now she's out of the water again. I think it's because of the rudders that are on one side acting as roll control. Maybe the pitch control. One of these days she's going to hang the, uh, hang out underwater too long and then she's going to sink. She's going to be a stinky sinky. A sinky stinky? A sinky slinky. Actually, the way this thing's moving is kind of slinky. It's going like back and forth, back and forth. If nothing else, uh, those uh, missiles... Are, um, they're definitely hurting, but yeah, it's just compared to those hollow point shells, they're they're nothing in comparison. So this this whole situation reminds me so much of watching from the depths tournaments. Is this kind of thing you just see a ship being mauled, and like it's a great way to showcase whether a design is good or not if it's still moving, and more importantly, still fighting even if it's like missing almost half of its blocks. I mean, let's just survey the damage here for a second. Look at all this. This is uh, two separate seven meter layers of armor, and this thing has uh, basically lost engine power. This is a particular steam engine I made that's nice and stable, but yeah. So the AI compartment is here. It's in heavy armor, because I thought that was appropriate. But yeah, it's like, wow. Like, wow, Scoobs. Oh, wait, 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 wait for it. Oh, just barely missed the despawn timer. Barely missed the despawn timer. Oh, no, this is it. I don't think she's going to rise from the depths for this one. Oh, maybe she will. Maybe she will. Ooh, ooh, nope. <laughs> nope, there she blows. There she blows. Wow, fattest canoe I've ever made. Uh, no idea how long that was. That might have been about, I don't know, 10 minutes, maybe? I'm probably going to have to, um... When I'm editing this, I'm going to have to take a note of how long it actually takes. Like, um, just removing the pause. Um, the time paused, spent looking at the thing. But yeah, you can see that, like, the whole thing is filled with propellers. And over here, we should see rudders as well. Somewhere. Somewhere. Uh, yeah, there. Rudders. Used for roll control. Yeah. So that works, that propulsion system works really well, but I don't think I set up the rudders at the right altitude uh, to do their thing. So yeah. Well, that's three hulls, and uh, I have no idea which one that. I think probably the stone hull, because I wasn't trying to be freaking cute uh, with um, propulsion and stuff like that, so... Let's spawn them all in again, uh, just because. And let's spawn you over here, and you over here, and you over here, you weirdo. So yeah, that's a, a three. That's an example of one way to uh, test uh, your hulls. Wow, these are on the enemy team. Well done, me. So yeah, that's um. I'm not sure if this is educational. It was certainly fun to watch these three things get mauled uh, by 500 millimeter uh, railgun hollow points. Uh, very cathartic, ca cathartic, cathartic. <laughs> no, cathartic uh, block confetti. And I just realized this thing is the only one that has a flag on it. Oh well. So uh, that's basically it for this weird fun video. So, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. 
support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps, and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell.